This is not an ADHD channel, but I'm gonna be making a lot of ADHD content and I am outside of a Bucky's. Um, so I recently found out, no, I didn't. I've known my entire life that I most likely have ADHD and I got diagnosed officially two days ago. Um, and honestly, I wouldn't have actually reached out and tried to find out if I have ADHD officially um, if it wasn't for my wife. So I'm really grateful for her shout out to her for um, asking me to go see a psychiatrist um, because I was really struggling with my work. So I'm going to be starting Dexedrin, I think is what it's called. Um, and I'm going to be doing a small dose in the morning. So right now it's 1030 p.m. And I'm going to update you guys how it goes and we'll see. So a little bit about me um, and my ADHD. I guess you could say um, the first signs that I showed was in kindergarten and first grade. I was just extremely talkative. Um, and that's something that all my teachers would always say. Um, during like parent teacher conference, I remember my first grade and second grade teachers um, telling my parents like, yeah, Fernando's a great kid. He's really smart. He gets his work done. Uh, he's just a huge disruptor. He just talks to his friends. It doesn't matter how we do the seating arrangement. He just goes on and on and disrupts my class by getting everyone to laugh or getting everyone rowdy and stuff like that. Um, following that up, in third grade, I remember I was put into like this thing called ALP, I think it's Advanced Learning Program. And I was put in that for from third to sixth grade. Um, and it was just so easy for me at that point. Um, actually, it was fourth through sixth grade, sorry. Um, and But in third grade, we were learning, I think, multiplication tables. And I was just like smoking everyone at them. Um, we played like this game called Around the World where you go around the desks and you just compete to see, you know, you go 1v1 against a person at each desk. And it's kind of like King of the Hill. Whoever solves this multiplication problem that the teacher uh, puts up with a flashcard, whoever gets that right moves on to the next desk and the next student. And if a you know student goes through every single um, desk or student in a row, then they're, they win the game around the world. I was like the undefeated champion. I won every single time we played. Um, I remember telling my mom, you know, school is just too easy. I don't want to go to school. I refuse to go to school and I still have to go. So um, that was interesting. From fourth through, through sixth grade, um, I was actually uh, fairly challenged um, with like fun projects through ALP. And I remember that there was um, a spot to be taken up to fifth grade and uh like skip a grade skip fourth grade and it was between me this girl named mallory and one of my best friends named connor and like what happened was that they said that mallory should be placed in the higher class i mean in uh, fifth grade and skip fourth grade because she was mature enough not because she was smarter um i think if i would have been moved up that would have been a great help to me um, not because I was like such a genius, but just because it would have kept pushing me. And that's what I just desired constantly. Um, because um, something that I guess I, I didn't know was kind of ADHD was that just growing up from like kindergarten till the end of high school, I literally never had homework unless it was like a semester long project that I just did in one night. <laughs> And uh, I never had homework, and my old, two older sisters always had homework. And I didn't know it was normal to have homework, and my parents would always be like, Fernando, where's your homework? You have to be lying to us. There's no way you don't have homework. And I'd be like, no. And then they'd check my backpack, and I'd have like a, sh a sheet of work done. And they'd be like, is this your homework? I'd be like, I guess. I finished it in class. It was just really easy. Um, I would finish all my tests first, like... It was kind of awkward I would actually wait like 45 seconds to five minutes 
um, after I finished to turn in my tests because I just didn't know. Um, yeah, I didn't want it to be awkward when I like put my test uh, down because it might have looked like I'm just speeding through and being sloppy. Um, so I just like brute forced my way through all of elementary school and junior high. And I was in, you know, honors classes. It was like really easy. Um, up until I would say sophomore year of high school. Um, that's when my grades just started slipping, but school was still really easy. Um, I wasn't having trouble understanding literally anything. Um, it was just that I figured if I can get, you know, a 95 on this test, I don't even have to do my homework in class anymore or during lunch or anything. I can just not do homework. So um, I would just not do homework. And as long as I got a B minus in classes, my parents were just not on me. They were like, okay, yeah, you're doing good. Um, and then junior year, that's when I guess um, pre-calculus started. And I had developed like no base for algebra. Well, some base, but not really that strong of a base just because I did this thing where I, it's called like plug and chug. That's what I call it at least where I just do like mental math as fast as possible and plug in values for X and Y. Just like, I don't know. It feels like it's like a thousand calculations per second. Um, but it's obviously not. It's probably like one for every three seconds. Um, but I just like get closer and closer to the answer. And then I'm like, okay, I'll use the calculator to get like the decimal places and, and see if I can get um, this answer right. So I didn't really actually learn how to solve algebra the right way, which made learning like trigonometry pretty difficult in pre-calculus. And, um, and I think I got like a B in pre-calculus, but I actually tried. Um, and then when calculus came up in senior year, I was in Calc BC, which is like uh, Calc 2, Calc 1 and 2, your senior year. And I just struggled hardcore. Um, uh, I actually dropped down to just Calc 1, and I did pass the AP test and got credit for that for college credit, um, but I also just started skipping school. Uh, I decided that it would be fine to just skip school, and I was avoiding a lot of um, homework assignments, a lot of learning assignments, uh, just because it was so boring, because, you know, the more advanced you get in school, and this will apply to college that I'll later hit, um, the more that you actually have to grasp concepts so you can apply them, which is why I was horrible at physics. Um, physics, in my opinion, is one of like the most concept heavy uh, classes. And so I did AP physics and I got a C and I didn't even take the AP test. I was like, yeah, I'm not passing that. Um, so then when it came time to go to college, I was like, I'm not going to college. <laughs> I'm gonna join the military. Turns out the military was a blast because I saw it kind of like a video game, even though I don't really play video games. Uh, the military is just so easy, in my opinion. Um, all you do is exactly what they tell you to do. And as long as you can do that, like as fast as possible, you don't really have to solve any problems because everything's told to you. Um, you just do it and then you get rewarded maximally. So I was meritoriously promoted, uh, you know, to E2, meritoriously promoted to E3, meritorious to E4, and then I got promoted to sergeant at the three-year mark. Exactly. Well, three years and three days uh, in the Marines. And that was in 2017 when it was actually a little, or 2016, when it was actually harder to do. Uh, now I think there's a lot of three-year sergeants. Um, and so, yeah, I got out of the military and it was time to do college. Um, needless to say, I started, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do software engineering um, degree. Well, it's a long story, but I'll, I'll save this story for a, like a longer video next time. But basically I declared my major as software engineering at Arizona State University online. And I used about half my GI Bill which for those of you who don't know, that's basically free 
uh, college and then money to go to college. So you also get like, um, if you do online school, about $900 a month uh, for like living expenses while you go to college. So during that time, you know, I figured, hey, this is free school. Might as well just see if I can pass. Not trying. I didn't try at all. <laughs> Um, and software engineering is not known to be an easy major. So I failed approximately 10 classes. I failed Calc 2 three different times. I failed um, like object-oriented programming, which is like CSE 205. I failed that three times and not proud of it. And I failed another class multiple times. Um, but that's just because I couldn't study. I couldn't bring myself to study. It was painful. Um, but at the same time, I was also working a full-time job doing uh, SharePoint development, which involved some development and a lot of like administering over a website. So fast forward, and then I, you know, my passion was philosophy. Uh, I have always had a passion for philosophy. So when you know, I switched majors from software engineering because they literally said you failed too many classes, you can't continue this major. <laughs> so I switched to philosophy just to get my degree and I got it as fast as possible. It was really easy to pass all the classes. Um, obviously it's one of the easier degrees. Most people would say, you know, that's a joke degree. Um, but to me, it was a lot of work, but it was work that I enjoyed. And so it wasn't necessarily easy um, because I tried my hardest to get every concept through my head and not take it as a joke. So I'm going to have to move locations. So give me one second. So basically what happened after that is I got a new job and this new job was, uh, really good, but I just couldn't do the job because like I said, some of it was development in uh, SharePoint and, you know, making JavaScript web parts, things like that. The other part of the job was administration, like handling user permissions, um, like basic ticketing. And I didn't want to do it. So there would be times where I would just call in sick and it because I was sleeping because I didn't want to do the work. Or there were times where I would call in sick and I just wanted to play chess online because uh, chess online is something that I can be like kind of mindless on. Um, it's like recreational or I would play Sudoku or something like that. Those are the things that relax my mind. Um, but I just didn't want to do these like really boring tasks, tasks, things that I, I found useless. Um, I ended up actually somehow finding an even better job um, doing development. It's called a power platform development and moving to Miami there. Uh, I was actually on site, so I wasn't a remote worker anymore and I loved it. I talked to my coworkers every day. It was a very dynamic. We talked about politics. We talked about sports. We talked about philosophy. We talked about literally everything. And so it was a very enjoyable experience. I honestly loved um, being part of that team. And uh, it was easy because every single day was different. Um, but then I ended up getting an opportunity with the same pay, uh, but remote. So I had to take it because um, my son was just born and my wife, I felt like I, uh, my role was to support her as a mother and uh, be the father that was that was extremely present for my son and for our son. And so what I ended up doing was taking the remote job and we moved uh, to Texas. So I was making $150,000 at this job or am I guess. Um, and I've always wanted to start a company, a consulting company. So I did end up starting it and I ended up getting a, a contract for 126,000 a year. So it ended up being that I was making $276,000 um, a year. I mean, I only had the job for about two and a half months at this point. So this is like a month ago. So it had, it had been two and a half months. Um, 
if I work a whole year, I'd be making 275k, and it was, you know, fairly basic work to keep up with both jobs. I wouldn't say it was impossible, um, but what ended up happening is I was like not working at work. I had three mandatory meetings at my second job and one mandatory meeting every single day for my first job. Um, and so I just decided like, you know, I'm just going to do meetings all day. And even if I have downtime between those meetings, I'm not going to work just because I can't, I don't want to, I'm tired. My brain's tired. I don't want to deal with these tasks, which led to me working every single day after my son went down to sleep from about 10 PM till 3 a.m. And I had work the next day at 8 a.m. So to be up at around 7.30 when my son woke up, and you can imagine that he gets up during the middle of the night, so I didn't really get that much rest. Um, so I would sleep about four hours a night for two and a half months. So that was pretty rough. And I was doing all that work, uh, and I have to move again. Kind of embarrassing, but I forgot to mention the entire title of the video, which was that I did quit one of my jobs um, because the workload became too overwhelming um, and I wasn't able to handle like the anxiety that I was getting from procrastination in the second job. So I just quit that one today. Um, so I'm back to making 150, not 276. So that's a little detail that I forgot to add, but enjoy the rest of the video. I guess I'll just talk while I drive home. So yeah, that's what ended up happening, um, is that I was working and a lot of nights I was pulling all nighters working from 10 PM all the way till about 6 AM. And I would only sleep from 6 AM to about 7:45, sometimes eight. Um, so that was obviously not healthy, but the main thing I want to get across is that I just couldn't work during the day. Those meetings were like draining me, but it was coming back from, you know, high school and my elementary years where I just didn't want to do work that I felt was just too easy or mundane or you know, lacked, I just lacked motivation. And then when there was a project starting, I would start that project and just like be an all-star. I'd have meetings with a client and the client would be like, oh my gosh, like you are doing exactly the work that we need. You know, about four weeks after that, once the project is fully started and it looks amazing, and a lot of the real work is ramping up to, you know, start testing the product and things like that, I would be calling in sick again. I would be saying, you know, I just can, you know, do the finishing details, um, which was, you know, numbing because I worked all night to get it done and I just, I just wasn't able to. There would be weeks where I wouldn't do any work and I would wake up and dread you know, the morning meetings where I would have to give work updates because I did nothing and I would just have to make something up. So finally, my wife said, you know, you're tired, you're getting sick, you look horrible. Um, you know, Fernando, you should see a psychiatrist. I think you, and I'm pretty sure you have ADHD. Maybe you should see if medication will do something for you. So um, I got an appointment. She set up one up for me. And yeah, I was instantly diagnosed with ADHD. Um, I was given a exam and the first one was about 80 questions. And then I was given Stratera. So this medication called Stratera, it's a non-stimulant. I did it for two weeks, about two and a half weeks. And it was horrible. I was even more tired. I felt sick, I felt nauseous, I had psychosis, which I didn't even know that was possible for me. It was scary. And I was just so grumpy, so moody. So I just decided to stop cold turkey, which was bad as well. But 
I ended up scheduling with a different um, nurse practitioner who had great reviews on ZocDoc. And yeah, I was prescribed, sorry, the traffic was weird. I was prescribed Dexedrine or Dexedrine. I'm not too sure of the pronunciation. Um, and so we're gonna see how that works. Tomorrow's my first day of trying it. I'm really excited. I know that it's a low dose and I weigh 200 pounds, so I don't know if that's like, I fall feel anything, but I am extremely hopeful. Um, and hopefully someone that sees this can relate to my story. And if they are, cause I'm 29 years old. Um, and this is, you know, it's weird for me to see a psychiatrist. I was in the Marines where mental health is not really cared for whatsoever. Uh, and I'm also, you know, son of immigrants that don't really believe in depression and things like that. So it's kind of weird to me to get the process started, but I'm so excited. I think this is going to work for me. I have so much hope. So I'm like, even if it doesn't work, I feel like the placebo is going to be so strong that I just end up being productive tomorrow. But I'll give you guys an update tomorrow. And um, yeah, just wish me luck. And if anyone wants to comment, you know, their story or any questions for me um, or something that I can answer on the next video, then that'll be great. So yeah, I look forward to uh, telling you guys how it goes.